Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm sure you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm actually putting the finishing touches on my short presentation on Kwanzaa. In case some of you all don't know what Kwanzaa is, let me uh, share with you what I've written so far. Okay? Kwanzaa was actually started in 1966 by a professor of black studies at California State University. He actually created Kwanzaa after the Watts riots. Some of you all may know about the Watts riots, but that was a difficult time for African Americans. So he came up with Kwanzaa because he felt like we as a people, we needed our own thing, so to speak. You know, we needed a holiday to celebrate us as African Americans, you know, our culture, traditions, um, you know, just something to better unite us as a people. So again, he came up with Kwanzaa in 1966. Now the word Kwanzaa itself means well, I'm sorry, it's an actual phrase, Matanda Ya Kwanzaa, and that is Swahili, which is the African language for first fruits, okay? Now, each family will celebrate Kwanzaa in its own way, but celebrations often included songs, dances, African drums, storytelling, poetry reading, you know, all that good stuff, but it's usually ended with a nice traditional meal, which I'm sure we all can appreciate. But um, there are seven principles of Kwanzaa, and there are seven nights for Kwanzaa. And on each of the seven nights, the family members gather, and a child will light a candle on a kanara, which I will share with you later on. And then, as a result, one of the principles are discussed. So, to help me talk more about the principles, I have a couple of friends that are going to come to you in their own special way to talk about the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Oh, and before we start any kind of service, we always need to start with the scripture and a prayer by Minister Karen Howard. Greetings, everyone, and happy Kwanzaa! Even though Kwanzaa is celebrated during the end of the Christmas holiday, it is important because it is a platform by which we renew and affirm the strengths and values of African Americans and our ancestors. The following scriptures in Genesis 50th chapter verses 24 through 26 for this moment remind us to remember our ancestral heritage. The scriptures from the King James Version reads, And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being an hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him and put him in a coffin in Egypt. Kwanzaa for Life Prayer O come, all ye faithful, rejoicing and victorious. Come, let us adore the Lord of life and goodness as we celebrate Kwanzaa and the African American heritage. Come and give thanks and praise for the journey. Jesus, by your mercy, grant us the grace to cherish this life. Guide us to uphold the dignity and respect of life from the moment of conception to its natural end at death. Lead us to be true to our nature as you created us. We ask these things because we have our roots in the divine origin of our Creator and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you so much, Minister Howard, for that wonderful scripture and prayer. Now the next person that will speak will be speaking on the very first principle of Kwanzaa, which is Umoja or unity, Mr. James Bond. Good evening, everyone. This evening, we'll be talking about the first principle of Kwanzaa, which is Umoja. The principle of Umoja means unity, speaks to our need to develop and sustain a sense of oneness, righteousness, rightful togetherness in a small and large circle and significant of our life 
from family and friendship to community and cosmos. It urges us to practice a principle and peaceful togetherness rooted in mutual respect, justice, care and concern, security of person and equitable shared goods. And it calls on us to stand in solitary with the oppressed, suffering and struggling people of the world in the cooperative achievement of these goods. Thank you and happy Kwanzaa to you. Thank you so much, Mr. James Barnes, for bringing us the very first principle of Kwanzaa, which is unity. Now, the second principle will be brought to you all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, by email by Mr. James Thompson. Greetings from Atlanta and everyone. Happy Kwanzaa. As already mentioned here, there are seven principles of Kwanzaa, and the second principle is Kuji Gamila, self-determination, to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. Kuji Kujilama principle states African Americans like all people need shared cultural values, symbols, rituals, and practices in order to give their families and children meaning and value and identify community. Thank you so much, James, for sharing with us the second principle. And now the third principle, Ujima, will be brought to you by Ms. John Lane. Greetings and happy Kwanzaa. Ujima. December 28th, the third day of Kwanzaa observes the holiday honoring Ujima. The commitment to active and informed togetherness on in matters of common interest. It is also recognition and respect of the fact that without collective work and struggle, progress is impossible and liberation is unthinkable. Moreover, the principle of Ujima supports the fundamental assumption that African is not just an identity, but also destiny and duty. An example, it's a responsibility. In other words, our collective identity in the long run is a collective future. Thus, therefore, is a need and obligation for us as self-conscious and committed people to shape our future with our own minds and hands and share our hardship and benefits together. Happy Kwanzaa. Thank you, John, for sharing with us the third principle of Kwanzaa. And now I will be sharing with you the fourth principle, which is Ujama. Ujama teaches us to support one another and to build businesses that benefit the whole community and helps it thrive. Opportunities include, which you may have heard, We Buy Black. And basically, it means that we should support Black-owned businesses. The idea behind that is to exchange money within the community first and provide jobs within our community first so that we can thrive and increase the wealth upon each other. Ujama. And now to present to you the fifth principle of Kwanzaa, Nia, is none other than Mr. Sherrod Knotts, cinematographer, director, writer, and actor, by email. Sherrod Knox. Greetings, everyone. I'll be speaking on Nia, which is the fifth principle of Kwanzaa. Nia recognizes purpose, which focuses on building and developing our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. On this day, family members should examine their ability to put their skills or talents to use in service of family and community at large. You should try to determine if your purpose will eventually result in positive achievements for family and community. So therefore, take time today to reflect on your expectations from life, and not only that, discuss your desires and hopes with family and friends. Thank you. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Sherrod. And now to share with us the sixth principle of Kwanzaa will be Ms. Katrina Smith from Fayetteville, by way of email. Greetings everyone and happy Kwanzaa. The sixth day of Kwanzaa, which is celebrated on Tuesday, December 31st, is Kumba. 
Kumba is the commitment to being creative within the context of the national community vocation of restoring our people to their traditional greatness and thus leaving our community more beneficial than we inherited it. The principle has both social and spiritual dimension and is deeply rooted in the social and sacred teaching of the African societies. Thank you. And now back to Angie. Thank you, Katrina. And now the last and final principle of Kwanzaa, which is Imani, will be presented by Carla Reading. Diane. Imani, the seventh and last day of Kwanzaa. It is profound belief in the commitment of all that is of value to us as a family, community, people, and culture. In the content of African spirituality, it brings with a belief in the creator and in the positiveness of the creation and logically leads to the belief of the essential goodness and possibility of the human personality. For in all African spiritual traditions from Egypt on, it is taught that we are in the image of the creator and thus capable of ultimate righteousness and creativity through self-masonry and development. Therefore, a faith in ourselves is key here. Faith in our capacity as humans to live righteously, self-correct, support, care for, and be responsible for each other and eventually create the just and good society. Thank you. And now there will be a special presentation by myself and my son, Noah James. Okay, now we're going to talk about the candles. And the candle holder is called a what? What is that you're holding, Noah? Kintara. Kintara. And as you can see, the Kintara is sitting on a straw mat. And this is the cup the libation cup, and usually it's filled with water or wine or grape juice. And after the ceremony, uh, each family member would take a part, would take a sip from the cup. It's also called a unity cup or emoji cup. Okay, and the candles that go into the Kintara, they are colored red, black, and green. Noah, can you get the black candle? The black candle goes in the center, right in the middle, and that represents blackness, us as a people, okay? okay? Can you get the green candle? I'm sorry, get the red candle. The red candle represents blood, which is blood that was shed during slavery, and also represents other types of struggle that we as a people have endured over the years. Okay, and the green candles. The green, cam green candles represent earth and our prosperous future on earth. Okay, and there you have it. The Kwanzaa candles, which is on the Kintara and the Unity Cup. And this concludes the Kwanzaa presentation. Thank you. Thank you.